All right. Before we start, I want to let you know about this amazing all-in-one podcasting platform called Listener.fm. Listener helps you record, edit, distribute, and monetize your podcast all in one place. With just one click, you can distribute your podcast to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and others. Check it out at Listener.fm. Let's talk about when you were in university. You studied interior designing. Where was your head at at that point of time? Uh, yeah, actually, it, it wasn't really university. It was like secondary school mixed with interior design. So I was like kind of after after the ninth grade, I didn't go to hmm. like normal secondary school, but it was more like mixed with this with this uh, interior design. So yeah, did that kind of for four years. Um, yeah, honestly, it was just I didn't really know what I wanted. But it kind of felt that going just to secondary school felt kind of kind of kind of pointless, you know. Why I can't throw something else in you? You just see, see what comes out of it. But it was very super basic, like interior design stuff. Uh, but it was, I, I think it it was good in a sense that the secondary school was easy. Like <laughs> it wasn't that hard because there was this additional thing, uh, like interior design. So 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 yeah, it, it was fun. It was fun for years. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's been a while. It's been a while since that. Definitely. It's been like almost 10 years, right? So after that, I read that you did some product sales. What, what was, what did it feel like, like studying all this design work and then suddenly hopping into this corporate well, world where you are doing sales? Well, actually, it, like I was, I was quite young, you know, at that time, and it was mostly really just trying many various different things and just grabbing the opportunities you were able to get. And around that time, I was really into like downhill mountain biking, so I was quite into mm. the whole like uh, mountain biking network. And I just I got the job to work in a bicycle shop and just sell bikes and and stuff. So I did that for for a couple of years and that was kind of along while I was really into downhill mountain biking and that sort of stuff. And actually during that time when I was a salesman, one of our like regular clients were people from IT industry and like regardless that I had like zero background in IT <laughs> and so on they kind of had a very interesting very niche very specific technical roles uh, in their company and they kind of gave, gave me a shot you know I don't know just you seem like a decent guy you know come and try this out maybe you do well uh, and yeah so I kind of that was my entrance into the IT industry so so yeah, kind of got there, proved myself. Was really hard at the beginning because I really didn't know anything, but but kind of got got the initial things rather quickly and just got going. And yeah, after that, it, I was I was in IT industry for around ten years. Started with like technician roles, and later down the line, just kind of switched more to managerial positions because why not? Just wanted to give it a try. Uh, so yeah, that was more like what happened before the creative uh, going uh, all in as a, as, a, as a creative yeah let's talk about let's talk about when did you start actually exploring this on the side because definitely before making that full-time jump you might be exploring a little bit that okay let me try art while i'm still in this industry um yeah the, the switch kind of happened you know i've always I think I've always had this kind of entrepreneurial mindset, but in a very light way. I was, let's say, more this, you know, wannabe entrepreneur, you know, oh yeah, building a business sounds cool, sounds cool, or whatever, whatever, but mostly you talk and take zero action or whatever, just be the smart ass in the room. Uh, so I, I think that was in me kind of for a very long time. But the the, the main switch, how actually the big switch happened was, I was like in my corporate world, there was another guy who was just kind of, he said to me like, hey, Anis, do you want to go study business psychology? I was like, huh, sounds good. You know, I feel a bit stuck. I feel a bit like weird. I don't know really what I want. You know, sounds a bit business, a bit psychology. Sounds interesting. Fuck it. You know, let's do it. Let's go. So so we, so we went to the university. I studied there for like one year and then I quit. But in that, in the, in the university, one of the subjects was, I think it was called something like, like business or building a business or generating business ideas or something. I, I didn't remember exactly, but basically the task was, hey guys, you have one week to figure out the business plan and present in front of the room your business plan. And I didn't remember, but there was 
interesting switch that happened in my brain at that very moment. I was like, you know, you always wanted to do something on your own, but you just find excuses or whatever. And kind of, I committed at that moment. I said, you know, Janis, you'll figure out a business idea, something that you will be able to do right now, you know, with your current obligations, with your nine to five job, but something you will be able to start now, you know, no big, like I will build next Tesla, you know, but I don't have resources or whatever, figure out something that you can actually do. And it was a very interesting switch. So I kind of committed to that. And then that week I just went and I researched, you know, what I could do. Uh, Hmm. And at that moment, I discovered like this whole world of the online business. I was like, oh my God, there's just like so much people and making this money and whatnot. And I was just, I didn't know anyone. I was just Googling and kind of this, this new dream started to emerge in myself, you know, make a living online. Wow. That sounds super cool. There are these people, you know, living on beaches and, and, and doing their work remotely and so on. And that, that, that was something I really aspired to. So yeah, whatever, you know, I made my presentation. It was some weird ass business idea. Of course it didn't happen or whatever, but, but that new aspiration, that new dream kind of, I, I, I got it. I, I was, I was really into making this happen. And yeah, after that, just, I somehow discovered four hour work week, the book. Yeah. And at the, and at that point I didn't read books. I've, I've never like still to this day, I have never actually read a thick, a thick book, you know, but, but the, the paper version, I somehow, I don't know, I didn't develop the reading habit, whatever. Uh, and I kind of, Oh yeah, mm, this t- title sounds really good. Would be nice to know what is in this book. You know, maybe it's good. And I, I remember I was listening to some sort of interview on YouTube and somebody mentioned audible and that was like, Oh my God, there are things that there are things like audiobooks you can listen to. It's like, that's where I was at that time. It was like five years ago, probably from this moment. And, uh, and yeah, that kind of, okay, maybe I can listen to this four hour work. And I still remember to this day, I was standing in my bedroom, listening to the four hour work week. I was around like two hours in the book. And I said like, holy shit, Giannis, you've been such an idiot, you know? And I just realized that there is this insane amount of information out there. And there are people doing these crazy things. And I was just walking around with this feeling, you know, mm, I got life, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty smart or whatever. That was kind of my belief. And I was really experiencing this like, holy crap, there's so much stuff out there. I have so much to learn. And that was my big moment into the personal development. After that, I was just crazy about personal development, like read books, read this, read that, like listen to podcasts, went completely nuts with it. And that was like, if previously I listened to music and watch TV, after that I was working my nine to five, you know, having my friends, family and that sort of stuff. But like all the spare time was was self-development, personal development and that sort of stuff. And just trying some some things on the side. And, and yeah, that's kind of where it kicked off. And I think all this personal development learning and trying different things online it went for around four years since till i got into the visuals and actually things started to move and i started to gain some traction some following some momentum and uh and yeah now we are now we are here and i'm doing this like full time exactly janice i actually want to go back to when you just graduate from university from school do you think you had some responsibilities and because of that, you had to take a job that was sustainable? That was the reason why you weren't able to explore art? Or was it just very natural that, okay, you uh, just went into sales side, IT side? I'm curious about this. I don't know. I I think I didn't actually thought that much. I was just living my life going by the like, society's default standard you know get Mm -hmm. a job oh i have a better job now you know let's let's take that bigger salary let's go let's see where it leads and i really lacked lacked the intention i just lacked any sort of like aspirations in terms of business side or whatever you know i had a i had a nice like family life i had a nice uh nice job everything was good you know Uh, i did my cycling on the side you know what what i have to complain so I don't know. Yeah. And, and and like the story I, I described when I discovered like four hour work week and all that sort of stuff, that Mm. was really when something, some switch happened inside me and there was this new desire, new aspiration to go this, this, this route instead of the like regular, regular, um, nine to five or whatever. 
Definitely. That book is powerful. I remember, I still remember, like, you know, I was in India. Uh, I was in this weird situation where my visa was stuck, so I couldn't come back to Canada. And every single day I would go on for morning walks and put on, I would, I would, not, I would not even look for Audible. I would just go on Spotify and Spotify has a free version of all the books. So I would just listen to that. And I would, and that, that's, it's, it's very motivational. It's very pumping that, okay, you can just, Start doing a work, build on these systems, hire virtual assistants. It's super cheap to hire. And yeah, once you have a really good oiled machine, then that's how four hour work week works or four hour work week works. Yeah. So it's really interesting how Tim Ferriss lays it out. It's definitely like, you know, it changes the way how you think. I'm curious. So how long before you made that switch of going full time on your art? Were you still doing this as a side hustle? Was it like a couple of years, three to four years? No, it was like, I would, I would say four years was really just learning and running some random experiments. But I would say as a very, very, very naive and very inexperienced creator, you know, doing a lot of nice to have things not like must have and not really focusing on like growth and actual things that matter you know which is like sales you know getting attention and that sort of stuff I was just doing stuff that was interesting and fun for me but they 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 didn't lead to any sort of like business type of thing so that happened for around four years and then okay then i then i kind of when i when i when i started to basically like how I got into visuals, it was like first trigger for me was, I would say there are three three people who got me into the visuals. Like first one was, uh, you probably have read like James Clear's blog. And you know, sometimes in, he blo- in his blog, he adds some sort of illustrations just to like illustrate some of his concepts. And that was the first time when, when this like idea like, huh, you can actually like communicate a full on interesting idea or concept with a visual. And and that was the first time I got this 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 idea that hmm, you can actually communicate with visuals, you know, it's not necessarily that you need to write like long blog posts or make YouTube videos, because that was like, if you are a content creator, you need to write like blog posts, you need to make YouTube videos, that sort of stuff. It never really struck me that you could do visuals. And then I started to play around with, with some sort of concepts. Uh, and, and yeah, I think after a couple of months, I discovered Jack Butcher, which, which you probably know as well with his like black and white illustrations. And like the lesson I learned from him was that he really proved just by showing up online that this can not only be like a way how to communicate like ideas visually, but this is, this can actually be a full on thing, you know, because he, he built like a sex, successful business behind it. And, and that was the like second validation, like, huh, like James Clear showed me this, like Jack Butcher now showed me that there is actually a market for it and this could be a full on business. So then I leaned in even more, even more to the visuals because I really loved it. It was interesting because most of the, most of the work is just like brainstorming and figuring out how to like come up with these interesting concepts and then communicate them simply. So yeah, then I, then I continued to do that. And another big switch was when I discovered the work by Liz and Molly. They are kind of quite popular on Instagram. They talk about like feelings, uh, feelings at work. Uh, and what they showed me really, what I learned from, uh, from, from them is that since then, like most of the visuals and illustrations mostly was, you know, value, illustrate these ideas, mm. illustrate this valuable, you know, use this valuable principle or whatever, whatever. But like Liz, what, what Liz and Molly really did, they, they did a lot of like, at that time I was reading a lot of like kids books as well. And if you read a lot of kids books, like uh, how, to, how, how to be a good parent and so on, one of the things that pretty much every book covers is like acknowledge kids feelings if you want them to listen to you and that was something similar that kind of Liz and Molly did as well they 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 acknowledged a lot of these feelings at work you know that people have and so on and and that really drove a lot of engagement and I find it very like relatable and interesting and and that was the time when I kind of started to lean in and start to make these illustrations around like my creative struggles because I had this like four year experience of like struggling creative, just trying to figure things out. And that's actually when it really started kind of to take off. And I was at that, at that point I was really kind of committed as I was like, you know, let's take this seriously. I will, I will do this like daily on Twitter or whatever. And, and, uh, and I took it quite seriously and I really posted daily and, and tried to do my best work. And since that commitment, it was around half, half year, since I quit my nine to five. And at that point I still didn't have like, like the, the, when I made the switch, 
like my validation why I made the switch. First, first thing, I had some like man, money in the bank. I was able like with with like we we, mm. we sat down with wife. We kind of we kind of understood. Okay, you know, with some support from government, with our like kind of savings, we are good for around one and a half year. You know, to go without without any income. So so that was the kind of the first thing. The second thing, like my creative things started at least to pick up some momentum. I saw like okay, people like this. You know, there is some sort of constant growth and so on. Uh, and I started to get some some freelance gig proposals just in my Twitter DMs. So those were kind of the elements that that made me made me say that okay, you know, maybe fuck it, <laughs> let's let's go for it and see where it leads. You know, because like to me, it was what's what's the worst case scenario? I was working like in IT as a project manager, like a role that isn't quite huge demand. You know, worst case scenario, go back find find another job. It wouldn't probably be a problem. And yeah. That that that's it. Now it's been like a bit more than a year since I have gone full time as a creative, and it's a bit good. That's crazy. Yep. So I saw your Twitter. Your Twitter's your Twitter account basically started. It says November 2020. You quit your job in May 2021, and now it's been a year since you are. And today you are this big Twitter creator, which is showing people these beautiful visuals and also helping them provide value. So, like. For me, uh, it took a lot of time to understand what Twitter is, how Twitter works. You found your three inspirations, uh, one mainly Jack Bush on Twitter, but how long did it take from learning Twitter to actually taking that action on Twitter? About Twitter, I, I think one very impor- important aspect that helped me kind of to grow on Twitter and just uh, get into this creative space that was previously before basically i created that twitter account whatever it was november 2020 um it was that previously i was mostly just a lone wolf there was there was no friends were doing some similar stuff i didn't have any friends in the creative space i was just doing my thing and basically my 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 mentors were like audiobooks and podcasts you know i was just observing uh, observing others from uh, from like whatever my <laughs> my bedroom and phone i joined jack butcher's visualized value community just the community i remembered he at that time when was this that was around the same time around the same time but like kind of the the big change was that there wasn't like any particular like value or whatever but just being and talking to people who are just like me, you know, some of them were like more ahead of me, some a bit less, uh, whatever, mm. in terms of whatever, you know, <laughs> followers or just knowledge or, or, or business experience or profit, whatever you, you, whatever metric you use. But it was very liberating and it was very amazing to just be among these fellows who are just, just like you, you know, trying, trying to, to, to do their thing and like make a living online and then teach others and whatnot. And that was a huge change in me. It was it was it was massive. And from there, like one connection led to another one. I started to engage more. I started actually to to like uh, engage with others' work and develop some relationships. And then somebody like sends me like, "Hey, this is you know awesome. Love what you create." And all that these little little <laughs> little human interactions just helped me with the motivation and just slowly kept going there wasn't any like spikes or anything it was mostly just slowly showing up daily engaging with others like a human no hacks no growth hacks no anything like that just be human try to be quite high high signal and quite like low low noise because i find a lot of people and of course it depends on your intentions but i find a lot of people are producing like loads of noise and quite a little of not that much like novel interesting ideas um and i think if you really want to build following and you want people to like really wait for your next post you need to try to make 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 good work um and show up with that most of the time it doesn't mean that you need to be perfectionist or you can't like post your pictures from from the beach all that is awesome and cool but just don't go crazy with it at least from my experience that was some sort of mindset i kind of adapted now that's interesting also, I feel like being a parent has really impacted your productivity in general creativity and getting more uh, serious about the art and publishing it out. You mentioned one of your posts that 
when you first had your child, you stopped watching TV and went to bed instead. And Jocko Willink was your inspiration over there to wake up at 4.30 and convert your side hustle into full time. So how was that experience, being a parent, having this responsibility and changing the way you work? Yeah, I think... Uh... Yeah, my, my first kid actually got born around that time when I kind of started to get this aspiration to be a creator, which was like five, 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 five and a half years ago. Um, and yeah, what really changed is that I think what kids do really well, especially for like young parents, they really are good with cutting out all the bullshit. <laughs> so you kind of understand that, okay, no more Netflix. No more this, you know, no more boozing in the evening or whatever, whatever is your unhealthy habit. Uh, I think kids are quite good of, uh, of helping you to get rid of them. I think at that time, yeah, like not much changed, you know, I was still like going about my day. And when I was just, when I had the spare moment, you know, I had like earphones in my ears and I was listening to books and that sort of stuff. When I crafted some time to actually make something, I remember at the beginning, it was mostly like I started to go alone on lunches in my nine to five and I actually took my like laptop with me and just either worked 30 minutes on some blog post or something something uh and yeah the other time I wanted to find more time to work on my like creative pursuits and when we had our kid we stopped like our mostly our evening routines you know with like watching tv and that sort of stuff so that kind of got got out of the window and when we actually went to bed earlier it was e easier to wake up more early and i don't know i uh, somehow i i remember jacko jocko willing kind of inspired me to try this 4 30 out and i kind of did and of course it was a bit hard at the beginning but later on i just mm. loved that feeling to to wake up and like before everybody else woke up i like had two two and a half hours of complete silent awesome like work my my brain is fresh clear it's very easy not to distract myself like now i work in the evenings because like morning is a bit a bit messed up because kids wake up quite early and then there's just not enough time and i'm um i'm i'm, I'm, I'm just switching to evenings right now but i will definitely go back in the mornings when i can uh, and in the evenings it's a lot harder to con concentrate for me uh it's easier to fall into some sort of distractions and whatnot and just mornings are amazing uh, i love them it is a bit hard at the beginning, but if you go go to bed in time, it's uh, it's not that not that hard. Definitely, definitely. I think I was always struggling. I still remember, like you know, when I was a kid, and my dad would literally kick me out of the bed, and he would be like, "Hey, wake up!" But now, finally, with with your university, with job, you have to now figure the, this thing out. That hey, it's time to wake up early. Uh, I'm curious. Can you break down your entire journey of going from zero to now roughly 40k followers? So how did you got those first thousand followers? How did you get those first 10,000? And what was like, I believe there would be a couple, just a couple of tweets that broke, that exploded and sort of increase your followers a lot. So can you break, break that down? Yeah, definitely. But I still like the growth definitely like virality helps to have these little spikes but still mm. like if if we look at the virality i would i would say maybe you know probably more than 5 maybe 6 7000 came from some viral hits uh but in general it's just consistent growth i think yeah I, I think it really depends like what type of creator you are and what are your aspirations for example you know if we look at i don't know if you know but like Julian Shapiro, Sean Puri, let's say two very big accounts. And for example, Sean, he tweets like loads of like bullshit and whatever he wants, you know, he's basically, he's, he's having fun and he's posting whatever he wants. And he gains most of the followers from his, let's say viral threads, you know, probably most of his hmm. followers he have gained from these like viral threads. Um, and that's kind of, that's, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's different. That's not the game kind of, I was playing, I was going for like consistent, growth well what to what i was going i was going to posting a visual every day and every day like that mm -hmm. visual brought in some new eyeballs and it was basically yeah one and a half year posting daily everything brought in some sort of some some new followers and i think it's yeah it's important to understand what type of game you are playing you know 
in, in, in my case, so I, I had this mechanism, you know, okay, visuals, I know they work, you know, if I make a good job, I post them daily, they drive engagement, they drive some shares, they drive some new followers. This works, I just need to keep doing it and, and then this will work. But it's like, that's my main creative thing I'm doing, you know, that's that's basically main hmm. main main part of my job. So 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 what could do maybe maybe you know you because you have like a podcast, you have these other obligations, you know, and it's maybe hard for you to come up daily with this like content that could 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 drive this engagement. And I still think like it's important, of course, you know, to to engage with others and try to provide good quality content. But maybe your solution is this, you know, these viral hits. You you make these threads. You try to like push the right buttons, you know, and try to try to try try to go viral. But that was that was not the my case. I definitely don't contribute like my my growth or whatever to virality. It's just consistent good work. And yeah, early on, I kind of was able to validate what works and what doesn't, and I just doubled down on what works and was just basically consistent every day, showing up with my visual, engaging with others, just being being a normal human <laughs> as everyone else. So, so that's kind of how I would break it down. There was definitely no magic bullets, anything like that. If you just totally. go go and scroll my my Twitter, it will not take you that far. <laughs> just from the beginning, and you'll see. Okay, you know, not that great visuals, but getting better and showing up just every day and engagement kind of grows and and at some point i think it, like first thousand is the hardest then i would say ten thousand was 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 quite 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 hard as well but i think actually when you get to a certain point i would say one thousand two thousand twitter was really good pushing out good content if your content is good then you have like two thousand followers and you post at a good time when like a lot of people are around and if really like people are hitting likes and reshares twitter will feed it to more accounts it really does work like really well you can you can go viral quite easy with quite small following as well like there is there would be a, almost no difference you know if i would post the visual and sean would post the visual with his like five times more followers uh, but i believe the engagement would be quite quite similar because yeah twitter is in, in that sense it's very interesting definitely uh, definitely how, do, how does it feel like today that you can just go to any good location uh let's say bora bora islands and you can still continue your work and you can still produce really good work and that actually even helps you further with your creativity because that puts you in the mindset um how does how does it feel like having this four hour work week job now not exactly four hour work week but yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it's, it's definitely not the four hour work week is just it's it's a very catchy title and i and i think yeah, yeah it's not it's not like <laughs> i work uh, I, I work a lot uh, but the ability to have the control and to do what most of the time what you really love is 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 of course amazing and then the fact that i can whatever go wherever wherever i want and if i have my laptop with me and internet connection i can still do my thing yeah it's amazing it's a very humbling experience and it's yeah it's, at some point i really tried to kind of reconnect with those feelings when i was when i was back in the days just dreaming about this and it felt like it felt possible but at the same time it felt impossible you know that feeling you kind of believe that you can do it but at the same time like holy shit like how how i will get there i have no idea uh and yeah kind of being there is uh, is amazing it's very humbling and i think if anyone is listening who is aspiring to have something similar like that it's just it's i don't know you you need to keep going you need to keep going you need to keep iterating you need to keep looking for 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 things and solutions and then you'll probably pop out the other side at some point or time but it's, it's yeah it's very hard to plan it or figure out it's just yeah uh, i th i think there is this quote i don't know who said it or or what but i really find it very true in my journey that like 50% of the job is to figuring out what the hell do you want to do? And I find it like so true in my scenario because I was trying a bit of YouTube, a bit of blogging, a bit of this, a bit of products. I even went in to try to build the SaaS product with, with one guy. And uh, and yeah, none, none of those things work or it felt like an uphill battle or just I was not really motivated enough to commit to it fully and kind of visuals really, really worked um, but yeah, to get there, <laughs> I, I needed to do those experiments and just keep keep believing that uh, I'll find my thing. Definitely. How were the early days of the design like when you actually started just with the thought that, okay, I'm going to push out something every single day? What were the designs coming up like? And I de you definitely mentioned some of your inspirations. 
were your designs very heavily inspired by them? Were you trying something different? Because I'll, I'll give you a quick background. So uh, I first came across Jack Butcher and I thought what he was doing is like while everybody's trying to be very intellectual on Twitter, he basically did the same intellectual stuff, but he took those intellectual stuff because he knew that, okay, this is popping up right on Twitter. He took those lines and just started designing them. So he capitalized on the existing uh, market, but with his own creativity. So how did you approach this and how did your iterations look like? Yeah, I think like very early days, it's, it's of course, it's, it's always the case. Like I think David Perel has this nice line, like imitate, then innovate. And I think it's mm. true for, for most creatives. And it was the same for me, like, at the beginning, a lot of my stuff looked very similar, like James Clear. It was it was done in 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 quite different, like not style, but with different tools. Because at that point, I didn't have like iPad and Apple Pencil and that sort of stuff. So so I was playing mm-hmm. around with something similar like that because I didn't really know anybody else, and I don't know. I, I kind of yeah, I, I I was I was just trying some different concepts, but with similar ideas. Then from here and there, I, I innovated to something a bit different. Then tried like black and white and this and that. And and there there is quite a big backlog which I which which is not public, I believe, or maybe it is in some yeah. of my threads. Um, but yeah, I kind of. Then when I discovered Jack Butcher, it was it was very easy to fall into similar style or similar ideology as Jack Butcher because it's just I'm kind of a bit of fan of minimalism as well and I like this clear aesthetic and it's just it's so compelling you know what he's doing because it's in some sense you know it's simple and it's not simple you know it's it's not mm. that easy to come up with those clever interesting ideas but but yeah it's 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 just awesome it's very compelling to copy jack and of course a lot of people are doing that and I was there as well of course I tried to iterate with with something else I remember at some point I said to myself like okay Jack Butcher have these black and white lines you know I'll maybe go with pixels you know and <laughs> pixels will be my thing and 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 I tried some experiments with that and uh yeah I think at some point I decided that I want to try to have an iPad and start to like do some things with hand and yeah uh, at that point i think they were very like sketch like and all over the place and i was imitating some some probably a lot of people mixed together and i think yeah when i discovered liz and molly i think i'm inspired quite a lot from their style because they have in- very interesting like uh, it's something uh, what what i took from them like i often like color my things outside the lines as well and and which which i basically attribute that to i struggle quite a bit with like perfectionism i believe and Hmm. when you make an illustrations which are like jack butcher's type of illustrations you know in some sense they should be perfect because there are these lines and everything is kind of perfect and pivoting and iterating to this imperfect style was very liberating for me in terms that you know this this imperfection is perfect you know i don't i can't make it perfect because the style itself is imperfect and a bit all over the place um so yeah i just started to do that i think on procreate i I went for quite a while i was doing this like raster graphic and just doing these sketch type of illustrations but they were kind of imperfect and stuff if you scroll back in my twitter you can see them and at some point i switched to vector graphic uh, like meaning just so i'm able to reuse my assets a bit better and then i switched like i've switched a bunch of tools i tried various different things uh but now basically i have completely ditched my ipad and i i use only figma and i do all my illustrations and simple figma with pen tool and it's uh it's it's not that not that hard so so a lot of iteration happened there but i think what on a very important point and for any like aspiring person who wants to do this sort of stuff as well it's very important to a bit put aside all this design all that fancy stuff and really focus on the ideas because like i believe 80 percent of the people who are following me they are in for the ideas not how like beautiful they look and it's Mm. very important like if you focus on the ideas you can get by with a crappy style you know look at for example wade but why i'm sure you know him like one of the world's most popular bloggers uh, his illustrations is just like complete like turtle art. It's, it looks like in some sense ugly, but at the same time amazing, you know, and I think he really proves the point as well that you don't need to be a designer to make these illustrations. Like ideas is the king if you are into this world of explaining ideas visually, because I think it's like completely 
it's just a different field. There is fancy art, amazing aesthetic, whatnot. I can appreciate that, but like explaining ideas visually, it's it's something different, uh, and it's important to understand like which route are you going on, and, and yeah, how much you want to explain ideas visually, and how good you want to make them look, and so on. So I think That's focusing too much on yeah. the design can actually harm the message you are trying to get across. I think that's quite important to understand as well. It's something like in my course, I'm sharing like feedback for people. And and I think that's one of the most common things I see when people are having this urge and they are really trying to overcomplicate things and over design things because it just, there is this whatever social narrative or whatever that that should be the case. Uh, and it really shouldn't like idea is the king and you really need to just am i communicating what i'm trying to communicate yes awesome you know can you make it a bit prettier so it looks better yeah sure do it you know but don't go too crazy so yeah that's kind of my ramble on this whole design thing and it's a very i don't know if you if linkedin is your place where you get a lot of people or that's your main funnel but i was actually scrolling through your linkedin because somehow i was i just came across all your beautiful art on linkedin and you might have seen in your notifications a lot of likes from my end. Uh, but there were a couple of art that I thought were really cool. Like there was one where you show up, like there was a swimming pool. And on one side, there's a board where you jump. And the other side, you get out and you are like, hey, this is how this is. You dive into YouTube and then it takes eight hours and then you get back. I forgot uh, the exact art, uh, but it was something similar to that. And I- I'm just curious, are you... How does these messages come into place? Are these some lessons that you sort of did wrong and now you are trying to tell people that these were some mistakes I made and now I'm trying to make it better? Or is this in general like things you are reading online, some motivational books you're reading and sharing the best habits with people? It's like the, yeah, I know they, yeah, the, 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 the visual you're referring to, but like in general, the inspiration and everything it comes from various places like one of the Mm. most important things and which is like i don't really regret it but one of the regrets maybe i have when i was like aspiring creator was that i really i didn't took notes and and what i like do now is basically i capture everything you know i listen to i listen to podcast and i hear this interesting idea i know the idea i know down the idea then i listen to a podcast and i hear this interesting idea and my reaction to idea to that idea, you know, or some sort of feeling that hmm, I don't think it's right, you know, this triggers me. Why this triggers me? You know, note those things down because you find you can find a lot of content inside of that. So it comes from like everywhere, like podcasts, audiobooks, these ideas, feelings, uh, watching my behavior. You know, when I'm just procrastinating, why I'm procrastinating? Then kind of bringing that that scene that that whatever it is, you know, trying to bring that to visual. Another thing I do, for example, to get my ideas, uh, and I I believe the pool idea came from that, was that I was just, I often, when I go about my day, I look for a lot of things that just I find interesting or whatever, you know, I can can look at this microphone and be just like, huh, interesting, you know, what I could illustrate with this microphone, and I will just snap a picture with it, or, or I just, I see dominoes, and I was like, huh, dominoes, interesting, this could make thing, and I've made like loads of visuals with dominoes, so I snap a picture of those dominoes, uh, the same could be with the pool, you know, oh, this is interesting, you know, pool could be this, and use it in some sort of analogy, and it's just like, you really need to increase your awareness and really believe that you can come up with these ideas, but, uh, I think one important aspect is that one thing is really not to judge these ideas and just capture them, note them down, you know, bring them into your notes, whatever they are, raw, dumb, stupid, doesn't matter, you know, note them down, you will judge them later. And of course, when you come to the visualizing part, you know, to figure out that whatever, that pool visual, you know, it takes time. You you you, you take that illustration, then you, okay, what, what, what could go on here? What could people find like interesting, valuable? What's the message? Sometimes I go with a, with a clear message that I'm trying to get across. Sometimes I take this analogy, for example, I take that pool and then I think, hmm, what I could put in here, you know, so it would make sense and people would find it interesting and so on. So it's like all over the place. The creativity is completely messy. It's all over the place and there is no clear structure in some sense. But yeah, main thing is just to capture these ideas, don't judge them, and then you really need to commit and work with them. It is work. It is a lot of thinking, a lot of brainstorming. It's not like I'm walking. Hey, there will be this pool and this <laughs> object will be that and yeah. the pool will be this and uh, and so on. So, so yeah, that's kind of my 
creative ideation process in a very vague, <laughs> vague, raw way. Uh, I know Sean Puri does that. So Sean Puri mentioned a lot that he would like, you know, even watch a movie or documentary and start taking notes. Like all, his entire family would be like, you know, laid back watching the movie and he's just taking notes. He's like, I want to know, I want to note down the things uh, that this guy is doing really well, note down the things that could be improved and stuff like that. How do you think about taking notes? Is this something like I also love taking notes whenever I'm on a call. Like yesterday I was on a call with someone who is big in podcasting. He had a lot of good insights. So I was taking notes. And sometimes these notes are just a way to like store this, to make sure you remember this. It's not something that you will, you're going to refer back. It's just something like once you start writing it, you remember it really well. So what is it for you? Is it Are you creating a good documentary that you can, or a lot of documents you can go back? Or is it something just to make sure you remember this? Um, I can share how I do things. <laughs> and I definitely mm. don't claim that this is the right way. Because there was like, for a long period of time, I, you know, I tried to make the perfect note-taking system and I wanted things structure, you know, at some point I was following like the getting things done framework, you know, and Mm -hmm. have like this, this very, and none of it like worked to me, at least I was just, it just didn't work. You know, I was, I was falling behind. I was not happy. And then, and, and, and then at some point I thought like, like, fuck, fuck this, you know, and now I, I even don't have a to-do list. You know, I have my calendar. If I need to go to grocery shop, I will make a list uh, right then and there and just go, go, but I don't have any sort of system right now. But the note taking system, how I capture ideas, I use this app, which is bare notes. Like I'm into mm-hmm. Apple, Apple ecosystem. So it kind of, it's, it syncs across my devices. And, uh, it's just every time you have an idea, you note it down, you snap a picture, it creates a new page. There is no structure, no nothing. If if now there I'm only like using hashtags. If I'm if I'm noting down an idea and I'm clear that okay, this could be a visualizing visualized idea, then I will just use like hashtag idea and then I can just scroll th- randomly scroll to that hashtag when I want to create my visual and see like what resonates to me that day and like okay this speaks to me and then I dive into that. Um or if I don't know if I note some idea which could be like just just a tweet, you know, and then I maybe add a, add the hashtag <laughs> hashtag tweet. So I have that sort of organization. But it's completely messy. It's all over the place typos everywhere hmm. huge mess zero like in super small structure only with those with those hashtags and a lot of them are unlabeled so i just scroll around and i see they i, I really allow for my inspiration to catch on something and just dive dive in but but there is no structure i have no commitment to make it perfect or anything and it's a very liberating feeling to allow myself to have this mess but it works for me uh, at least so far but yeah i'm not claiming that this is the way to go but but, yeah. but yeah, I was trying to make things perfect and it didn't work. It was just more frustration. And now I'm all over the place and I'm kind of loving it and embracing it. Definitely. You mentioned like, let me show you my process. So how does your day look like? You definitely mentioned a lot of you. I, I have, I've seen a lot of art that is all about days that, okay, wake up at 4.30. This is when you have most willpower. This is when you have highest creativity. How have you structured your day? Um, yeah, m- most of the day it's, it's quite structured. It's, uh, we wake up whole family now pretty much more or less together. It depends sometimes okay. like uh, I'm, I'm sleeping with my boy. Sometimes I'm sleeping with my with, with wife. It really depends like who screams at the night and <laughs> where we end up. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a bit messy. We, we have two kids now, um, a boy who's five years old, uh, five years old and, a, and a girl who will be soon too. Um, so we wake up family together, we have our breakfast, like in the work days, usually big boy goes to the kindergarten. So, so we take it there. And then most of the day we have like structured in two parts, like from the morning, let's say eight or nine to 12, usually either me or my wife takes like her time or my time. And then like we have lunch together and, and after lunch until four ish, it's either my time or her time. You'd be usually like, each of us have our own time to do our own things and, and so on. So, so it's kind of split between that. And at four, we usually, you know, pick up the kid and then in the evening just do family stuff and, and whatnot. And then usually when I put down the, when we put down the kids to sleep around eight, nine, I now go work as well until 12 or something, usually for some three, three, three hours, uh, 
but that's now. I want to get back to my early morning routine, but just as the kid's mm-hmm. sleep schedule is really messy, it's it can be quite frustrating when you wake up at 4.30, go to bed early, but somebody decides to wake up at 6, <laughs> and then, then, then you are not able to work until you're like 7 or 7.30. So, so that's why I've switched to evenings at the moment. But that's most of the days. It's this, this yeah, simple, simple structure. Right. So I'm guessing you constantly take notes, you create a huge backlog of ideas. And when you set these, let's say two to three hour time or blocks for yourself, that's when you pick an idea, you are like, all right, prioritize one thing. And you're like, all right, what are some different aspects that I can think of? I can think of a pool, I can think of a garden. Let's now create around this. Is this how it works? Uh, I'm just guessing, but I'm, I'm curious. How does, yeah. how does those deep focus time work? Yeah, it's, 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 it's mostly, I really, it now feels like I have developed this habit to almost publish a visual a day. I, I kind of skip it mm. on the, on the, on the weekends because just not to, not to go too crazy. And I find that a lot of mm. people are zoned down in the socials on weekends as well. So I think it's a good practice, you know, not to go too crazy and leave weekends for weekends and, and, uh, not don't publish work. So, so sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Uh, but yeah, most of the time it's exactly as you are saying, like, okay, I have my commitment to make one visual a day, you know, what, what we could make today. Sometimes I have an idea from the previous day already. Sometimes I have made previous day, like a visual, if it's really like, uh, makes sense or whatnot. And another thing I do like, because like I have some work, you know, to do with like my courses and some freelance work uh, tends to pop up and so on. So often, like I have quite a big backlog of ideas right now. And what I will take, I will just take maybe something I've illustrated like four or five months ago. I'll iterate on it. I'll try to make it a bit better or a bit prettier or whatever. And I'll just publish it again because usually there's like new people who, who will appreciate it, who have not seen it. And then that's something I do as well. But yeah, it's exactly as you said, it's, it's pretty much very... There's no super clear structure, but there's more like this commitment to go daily. And then mm. usually that day I make something or the day before I've, I've, I've think about, and I've thought that like scheduling on bulking would be quite cool, but I find it a bit difficult. I'm very impatient. I really want to publish my work when I have, you know, when I have made it. <laughs> so, so usually it just happens. I make it and I hit publish and it's around, you know, when the USA and Canada wakes up around that time, I usually publish something new. Yeah. Right. That's cool. Uh, I know you mentioned a really cool thing, which I think a lot about, which is that people follow you for the message, not specifically for that one piece of art that you published today. Uh, I'm again, paraphrasing over here, but the reason I think a lot about that is because again, the goal with podcasts initially started with just keeping in touch with my friends. Then slowly we broke out into entrepreneurs. Now we are going entrepreneurs plus founders plus VCs and now I'm find, trying to find that message, that one message that I want to go with. So even though this message is very cringy, like, okay, I want to help you become the most productive yourself. I want to help you unlock your potential, but still you need to have one message so that you can like rally these people around you and so that you can also be very you can have a lot of clarity in terms of what is the value that you provide and why should be one follow you. So how long did it take to come up with a clear vision, mission, whatever that is and what it is for you right now? Mm. Yeah, this is a good question. And, and I like that you said like, yeah, whatever, it can sound cringy or whatever. And I, and I think it's true in some, in some sense, but I think it's at the same time, it's not true, you know, it's real. Uh, mm. And it, it, it's probably real for you and it's real for me. And like, to me, you know, kind of the selfish part of it is of course to make, make, make a life, right. have a lifestyle that I really desire. And I mm. love, you know, whatever, have this laptop lifestyle, you know, go wherever I want and, and spend, if I want to take a, take a day off, I can take a day off and I don't need to report to anyone. Uh, that's like kind of the 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 selfish part of it the not so selfish part of it is and of course like doing the work which i love which is like doing these illustrations and just learning and fueling my curiosity all that is just it's 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 play for me i love it but 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 kind of the 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 fancy mission statement that that companies put on their on their about pages would be that what i found is that like two one of the biggest pivotal moments for me in my life was one was to kind of get this aspiration 
to be a creative. Although mm. at the beginning it wasn't really to be a creative, it was more to have this laptop lifestyle, you know, to build something online. The creativity, the like being a creative, came later down the down the line when I discovered more people and I understand that's a thing. So, 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 so two things like with my work, if I can bring in more people into creativity, into personal development. I'm a happy camper. I believe like if you can develop a habit or if you can fall in love with personal development or this like being a creative or maker or build SaaS or whatever online, I really believe like most people will be <laughs> happier with that. They will have more purpose on and when whatnot uh, in their lives. At least it was it was the case for me. I heard that like all over the place. So with my work, with my snappy illustrations that, that can people, because like h- how I think about this in some sense is that, you know, you can go to somebody and you can put to them like this four hour work week, big ass book to their table. And they will probably never, mm-hmm. never read it because it's a huge commitment, you know, to, to, to read yeah. a book or whatever. But, uh, but like with my illustrations, I have this kind of this, not this hack, but, but what they do, they, they can communicate things extremely fast, you know, <laughs> and I kind of have this idea that you know maybe that sparks interest in more people and maybe they dive deeper you know maybe then they discover naval and they go to his like thread and then the next thing they are just listening a podcast with some somebody or i'm just i don't know listening to some sort of audiobook so that's kind of the dream just to bring in more people into creativity into personal development i think it's a worthwhile goal and while doing that just trying to live my best life that's kind of the definitely the mission and- statement I'm I'm curious that when you when you have a lot of followers, when you are known for a specific work that you publish on Twitter, then you start getting a lot of inbound leads. You might have received a bunch of DMs about uh, the first time, and people were like, "Hey, can you do this for me too? Can you do this for my blog? Can you do this for my uh, whatever for my other content?" How did that started feeling that it felt overwhelming and how did you approach that and how do you approach that today? Do you work, do you also work with the big creators right now? Do you plan to? Uh, Yeah, good, good question. Well, I think one pretty good thing for me was that uh, when I went all in into this creative pursuit, I never really, like I started to got some freelance gigs but being a freelancer, it was never really the idea. There wasn't this this idea that I will switch my nine to five to be a freelancer now. I was more like, I want to be a creative. I want to create this whatever passive income. I don't know yet how it will happen. But you know what I believe, like if you if there are people who pay attention to you, you know, if, if, if they follow you, if they're really looking forward to see some something, you, you can monetize that in some sort of way. You can create products around that. So there was never, never really a desire to go and work as a freelancer. And I had this money backlog that, that, that I didn't have this need as well to go crazy with freelance. So I, at the very beginning, I was, I had this like luxury to say no to quite a lot of, a lot of freelance that came my way. So I basically said no to everything Mm. that either I felt I'm not able to do a good job here because a lot of people come to me like as a designer and I really don't claim to be a designer, like the stuff I learned in the, in the, in the that interior yeah. design school, like years ago, I really, maybe so, something is still there, but, but most of it, like, I don't like, I can't do <laughs> a good like website design or whatever. I probably can, but, but it's, it's hard for me. It's not what I do. I, I explain ideas visually. So yeah, I said no to most of the stuff that came in when there came like, for example, the first like mind blowing thing which happened was when Julian Shapiro approached me. He just like DM'd me and said like, "Hey, love your stuff." I was, you know, I was just like, I think had thousand or whatever sub- subscribers, not that much. I was just shitting in my pants like, "Holy shit, why are you talking to me?" I'm like, I'm "Nobody, <laughs> who are you?" Like That's crazy. Uh, this, yeah. this this crazy person, and and that was that was of course crazy. So I leaned in like to those type of opportunities where really there is this profound connection that you make with maybe some, some bigger creator or whatever. Uh, those were, of course, I had bigger incentive to say, 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 yes, it was kind of more like, you mm. know, a business decision, but of course, a lot of people who are just like awesome and nice and interesting. And I love their mission. Like I, I always try to try to help and whatnot. So yeah, I, I did some freelance gigs. I still do. I don't say yes, practically to any more right now. I want to finalize the stuff I have. Uh, but I plan not to take on any more, any more freelance. I'm going to go full on, full on products and just kind of try to 
try to grow, grow in that direction. But yeah, I, I plan to, I plan to yeah. open consulting. Big... I want to see okay. how that will go. Like if, if somebody really finds my, my, my input valuable, let's chat, you know, for hmm. whatever, an hour, um, because it's a bit smaller commitment than, than, than freelance work. But we'll see. We'll see. Definitely. Any big personality that you worked with that you want to reveal? <laughs> well, yeah, I kind of worked with Julian. We are still kind of working, but it's a bit like different direction mm-hmm. now. Uh, it's, 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 it's on pause, I would say. But yeah, I think one of the biggest ones were, were Sean, like, because there was, he okay. was launch, launching his, his course about like power writing. So I kind of designed some content mm-hmm. for, for, for him. It was, it was awesome to work with him. We, we kind of, had the sprint for for a month for three weeks didn't remember exactly but it was really awesome to work with that kind of person who have like built huge business and sold sold it to twitch or whatever um it was awesome it was awesome to work with him and he's like he's his right hand man um and now i'm working with anna fraberga who is uh like sharing stuff around educational content she's she's working and releasing a book next year so i'm kind of illustrating that book that's one of my biggest freelance gigs at the moment which which i need to finish um so yeah but yeah i think those two and julian were the biggest ones thus far oh i actually yeah i i did a bit of work for steven bartlett who was like big in europe like mm. this this the diary yeah. of ceo guy uh small thing did for him but but yeah that's that's something else as well but those i think were kind of the biggest ones that most people could probably know that's really cool. You usually hear a lot about it in all industries, even in startups that, hey, go for the I actually. So help me understand how you think about this. So in most industries, especially in startups, when I was also building my startup, it was more about that. Hey, go for the top tier customers, the 20 percent customers uh, who have the money, who do not worry much about like, you know, uh, nickeling and diming you on every single aspect of your work. So because that not only gives you peace of mind, but also like, you know, it gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of work. If you work with people who are constantly like, you know, pinging you for support, if they're constantly pinging you that, hey, this is not worth it. That's that's just a lot of stress. How do you think about that uh, right now? Do you think that has impacted the way how you approach your work today right now? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think you have a very, very valid point. And uh, I think if you have the luxury, really say no, when you feel that you are not clicking with the person that you plan to work with either. Yeah, they are just too much of a manager, you know, really trying to control you or or, or in any way or form. Uh, I think I think that that can be quite frustrating. I, I think I had the luxury not to have that crazy freelance gigs everybody yeah. has been like really really good this far like i think especially sean sean is just if you have opportunity to work with sean try to work with sean he's he's amazing he's amazing like humble nice I define uh, amazing let's let's talk well, more about just, that it was just very it was it was always extremely positive to work with him and like even with like he was creating his course and he he really took me in mm. not only for the illustrations but he was like constantly asking feedback for his course content Giannis, what do you think about this you know hey let's let's just test drive this with you and he's just like he one of the things i learned from him and and that's something i want to study and understand a bit how to develop more of it but he has this extreme action bias you know because like for example we are we are in a meeting we have this interesting idea and I'm like, okay, we could do it next week. And he's like, okay, let's do it now. You know, 20 minutes, let's go. Let's, let's pump this out like right now in the meeting and just do it. And, uh, and yeah, just a very nice guy to be around. Just extremely positive, extremely supportive, very understanding, um, giving nice, good, constructive feedback, but does not leave, leave you feel like a, like a dipshit or whatever, but just it was very nice experience to work with him. Um, uh, extremely kind, nice guy. Uh, I think in socials, he tends to be sometimes a very controversial and try to, try to, try to push people in, in some interesting directions. But when you get to know him or yeah. work with him, he's actually, he's amazing. Uh, love that guy. So, yeah. Sean's, Sean's the best. Definitely. <laughs> he has a lot of energy. He has a lot of energy. I have recently come across one guy. We actually had previously, just two episodes ago, we had Johnny who worked with Sean for three to four years. So he specifically mentioned about like, you know, he's a frameworks guy. He thinks in terms of frameworks, he has a different way to approach things. So during the work, you definitely mentioned action bias, but did he drop any cool frameworks that you thought that you could pick or you can learn from this? You can apply in your own work, your own lifestyle. 
yeah there was there was one like well his whole his whole power writing course is with a lot of frameworks mm. and ideas you know that are very helpful i think there was one framework which i kind of were applying in my own visuals as well but he really strengthened that idea that i kind of embraced even more and thought about it more and he has this like for example let's say you write a twitter thread you write a tweet you create a visual whatever you are doing but you need to start with the end in mind like what is the reaction that you try to mm. evoke from the person in the other end you know do you want to create this rage feeling you know there's loads of different feelings and emotions you want to try to evoke but like think about what are you trying to deliver here what are you trying to evoke and, and then you for example when i create my illustrations i have this intention okay this is what I tr i'm trying to communicate and then i you know i'll go to my wife or or, or somebody just hey what do you think about this and then okay yeah clicks nice i'm i'm I've got it. Uh, I've done it. And and that's a very powerful thing because I think a lot of creators, a lot of people are just sticking something together and they lack this intention, what they are really trying to communicate or what type of emotion they are trying to evoke and they miss it. And people just scroll by because it's just, it, it, it doesn't resonate. It does not click. But if you have this strong intention, what are you trying to evoke? You can really craft your content to support that emotion. Um, so that would be one one interesting idea which i remember right now definitely i remember his one one of his clubhouse thread went super viral and that's when he got in touch with the big league vcs that's that's what he mentioned and he mentioned he was trying to like you know dissect the success of that clubhouse uh viral thread and he basically mentioned like exactly as you mentioned i forgot all the emotions that he listed out but yeah there's rage there's laugh and there's others but one that he said he loves at that point of time was finally someone said it yes and exactly. that's the one that he used for clubhouse because everybody was going after clubhouse but within themselves they also knew that okay clubhouse i don't think it's gonna work because if i think about my personal life i don't see myself using clubhouse all the time i don't really like the experience i don't really like waiting to like being in a room and waiting for something someone to say something valuable if i want to know something valuable i would directly go and search it on youtube or google so that was yeah. that was an interesting one yeah i think it was an on point example and i yeah it, it was exactly as you said it finally somebody said it. that's one of the emotions you can you can you can react and and he really it was nail on the head with the clubhouse i had the same feelings i was like yeah cool but like mm, don't don't see this go going anywhere you know i might be wrong but but when sean put it i was like bing <laughs> this this yeah. this will this will do so yeah that, that's really good I'm curious. So throughout our conversation, you mentioned that minimalism is something that inspires you, that uh, was sort of attracted, that something you were attracted by. So I think on minimalism a lot because I have to travel a lot. I'm an international student. I'm constantly switching places based on where I work at, uh, the cities I want to explore and stuff. So I make sure I only carry a small amount of stuff that's that's essentials that i need how do you think about minimalism how has it impacted your life other than work mm. yeah uh, minimalism i discovered i think from matt diavella do you know the youtuber right yeah love yeah, him. yeah 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 i love him as well I actually i actually yeah worked with him as well that was that was oh, that man. was a big big okay. star, star trek moment because like he was one of them, definitely I, I think my favorite youtubers like of all time you know mm. you could put like casey knight that guys nice next to him but he was like different niche or whatever yeah. so working with matt like when he speak up to me i was like holy shit like mom i made it <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so that 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 was that, that, that was a big big moment but yeah he got me really curious about the minimalism like back in the days i, I think some mm. some sort of friend kind of shared one of his videos and i was like after that yeah, i think he has two netflix stuff. documentaries yeah, yeah he has two, two Netflix two. documentaries all on minimalism yeah yep yep i have not seen the second one but the first one i have seen uh so he got me curious about minimals i just liked i liked the idea because i think like when i think about minimalism it's just you know it, it's almost like it gives you this permission that less is more less is cool hmm. you know this can be a thing you know because previously maybe more was cool or just more this more that fancy watch fancy this but but kind of minimalism helps you to be proud of owning less and that sort of stuff so so i don't know i just like the idea and i think i was i was most of the time i'm i'm 
I feel that I have been quite a big like kind of consumer and not been that uh, not taking care of my things that well, you know, maybe buying some shirts and just throwing them out if they get whatever dirty or a bit messy or, or something, something and not really taking care of my things. So I think I'm more intentional now about like all the stuff I own and I really try to think twice when I purchase something. Uh, mm-hmm. That has definitely improved. There's still like a lot of mess in the house and then kids uh, yeah. kids and stuff and, then, <laughs> and so on. I'm definitely not a great minimalist or whatever, but I have this 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 idea in mm-hmm. mind and i and i try to be more mindful with the purchases i make uh, and i really like to own less it's just i think all the physical things you own they have some sort of um they take some sort of space in your mind as well so owning less stuff in the physical world i think frees you up mentally as well and and, and you feel just more free uh and i and i, I like the feeling yeah yeah uh it's it's funny you mentioned man develop because I think a year ago, two years ago, I used to watch him religiously. I loved, I loved the way he presented. Same, same. I'm also into <laughs> photography, so love those color gradings, love those lights that he's using. That's beautiful. And yes. I think because he has this concept of minimalism, he would wear the same shirt every day. And the color that he chose was teal. I don't know what color shirt he wears now. At that point of time, he was wearing a lot of teal color shirts. That is the biggest reason why I started loving teal. Like when someone would ask me that, okay, what's your favorite color? I don't say blue or yellow or red. I say teal. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, I, I know those shirts. I think now he he, he goes for for this this not like dust type of color or sand type of color i think yeah but actually mm. when you when, when you okay. mentioned matt there is there is one thing which i which i have like learned from matt Diabell as well but like in general just by absorbing his work mm. as he was one of the guys who of course most people would consider him like as a successful creator you know million subscribers on youtube and whatnot and what he really proved to me was that he really standed for quality and he showed that you mm. know consistency is not everything you know that you can make like like quality is a thing as well because i think the vibe often is like push out whatever mvp let's go let's go consistency Mm. consistency consistency and not that people like talk about like trying to make really good work and of course there's a balance you know this is crazy you can like uh, i'm all up for mvps i'm all up for consistency i'm all up for quality it's like finding that balance but he was really somebody who who brought in that who came from the quality world, you know, and said, I will produce like amazing work. And and, and he really showed that it can like go viral and, and be really like whatever you, you can make as a creative by, by, by following that. So that's just a random, random lesson. I think I've, I've learned from him by observing his journey. No, definitely. Uh, what do you think about, you, you mentioned mom, I made it. And I'm just curious, like, what do you, th- how do you explain your work today to your parents? Uh, I'm not sure if they are like, how do you explain them that? Okay. I just make this uh, swimming pool and that's how I make money <laughs> on Twitter. I don't go to a full-time job. Like, how do you explain that to people who do not understand these new form of creator economy? I don't think I explain it that much. I'm like, I'm, I'm doing okay. things on, the, I'm doing things on the internet. Like that's that's usually the answer. I'm making some else. I, I, I should think about this because some people are asking me this, and I'm like, who, who are you? I'm like, I'm not really an illustrator. I explain ideas visually. That sounds weird, you know. So I don't know. I need to think about this. But but yeah, to my parents, they they vaguely understand what I do. Uh, they kind of understand, but I think they. They just shake their hands, but they don't really understand it. They're like, okay, okay, you do you. Are you fine? You have money yeah. in the bank account. Yeah. You're good. So, 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 so yeah, it's, it's fine, but it's not like they completely understand or I'm trying really to explain it to them. Unless, yeah. But it's, it's yeah, hard. I'm curious. Yeah, it's definitely hard. Yeah. The uh, initial days are super hard. I, I think, I think most of the, no, no, I'm meaning like, I think most of the people who are doing stuff online, they find trouble like if you would say like i'm i'm podcasting and like most people would say what's podcast <laughs> is it like a radio or what what it is so so yeah it's all these new jobs are built and it's not anymore like accountant doctor and whatnot but okay sorry continue yeah. with your your question yeah uh i actually forgot what i what i was asking but anyways i think you mentioned a really cool point uh 
right now a lot of my friends a lot of my a lot of people who are like you know 17 18 we interact with whom on twitter they would like you know talk about this that my parents are not allowing me and stuff like that uh, you are at a different stage of life uh, but for kids like i'm i'm just i just grew up as a kid like i just passed that kid stage so yeah like you know for kids it's really important to explain to parents to convince them that hey i want to do gaming all day i want to become a twitch streamer stuff like that but i feel it's a constant process of like you know building trust with your parents like for me i went i came to canada to study nanotechnology so my dad in my mind he was like oh he's going to be a researcher he's going to research chemicals he's going to research nanomaterials go into nano electronic stuff maybe work at uh corporate world like all tech company but then when i totally like won this hackathon got into microsoft as a product manager he didn't care he was super happy he was like now i can go to everybody and say that oh my kid works at microsoft because microsoft everybody knows it so i believe after that point of time even though i knew he had in back of your mind hey you're studying nano but what are you doing your full time job is totally different than what you went to study but still i believe because i was able to show that okay there is a stream of revenue that's coming in that build the trust and then as soon as i kept on taking these crazy decisions that okay i'm just going to write he was okay with it i'm just going to do podcasting he was okay with it so yeah it's a constant process of building trust with your parents to show them that yeah you know what you're doing and you can prove sort of yeah I, I, of course you know now i'm in, i'm in a different stage of life like i don't need yeah. like permission or whatever yeah uh, <laughs> but but i definitely understand what you mean and kind of I, I think this really struck a note with me in terms that when i was when i had the dream to be in a creative or whatever or build a business online you know none of people and like i had around knew about it or did something like that or understood it or whatever and and like when i bring something up to friends or or whatever at that time you know most of the time it's kind of it's a bit supportive but at the same time you can see through that they don't really believe or understand or just yeah 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 honest whatever go do your random thing you know uh i'll i'll i'll, I'll do my I'll, I'll do my whatever that not important but i think where i give like kudos to myself was that i really didn't really like like went to my parents or my friends and tried to shove shove in people's faces like this is what i do this is what i want to do like my mm. mentors were people who did it which was like audiobooks podcasts youtubers and so on so it's really important from who are you taking the advice from from people who who don't do this who have never done it who have no experience in it including your parents most likely or or you are leaning in to people who have lived this life on or who are living this life so yeah uh, i think it's important to to understand from where those people come from of course it's most of the time it's love you know and care and so on that they want you to just not to to to, to be homeless or whatever but uh, but they don't yeah. know this new world out there and 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 it's important to learn from people who who have lived it and exactly as you said you know later down the line okay some revenue stream this and that you know okay then their like belief and perception starts to change you know now people reach out to me like oh my god Yanis, you build this following and whatnot and how it's going like oh my god it's a thing and so on um so so yeah there's definitely don't talk and <laughs> just prove and, and then people will start to like support you and follow along until that be silent do your thing listen to listen to people who have actually done it and build it on the side and yeah definitely so you mentioned that these guys don't know they might not know about this new world that we are in let's talk about the new world the new world is creator economy what are you seeing about creator economy what are your thoughts in general yeah it's, i believe yeah it's 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 hard it's hard to say because i'm really into the bubble you know right now and most of them, like hmm. the people i'm communicating with are in this space but i believe like the general perception of the world starts to change as well that this is a new thing you know being a youtuber can be a career being a creator like creating stuff online can be a thing there is there is opportunities there is business and it's more widely acceptable i think right now so i think that's that's good um other than that i don't know it's it's just interesting how things evolve and yeah the society seems that they are appreciating it more but it's interesting yeah it's it's interesting how like all the like web3 and crypto and that sort of stuff like integrates into this like the nft world is pretty mad and insane 
Um, but uh, but yeah, I don't know. I just I just like that it's more socially acceptable as a thing, and it's not like your own dirty little secret anymore. And uh, yeah. Who are some upcoming artists that you are you see are doing something really cool? Because I know, like, I, I believe it's like around six months ago, four months ago, that similar to as you mentioned, like Jack Butcher was your inspiration towards Journey. I know someone who is doing very similar to you, who and you were his inspiration, and he used to post very, post very similar con content and i remember sometimes he would also comment below it that hey great work great work and that's how he pushed up uh his following i i believe that pushed him like gave him a lot of inspiration that gave him a lot of motivation and he kept on going uh i thought that was super cool like you know jack butcher inspiring you and you inspiring this new guy and now there's a new like you know there are even more ideas in terms of how do you help people visualize ideas uh, but in general who are more or who are other upcoming artists that you are seeing right now who you think are doing some interesting work? Yeah, there are there are a lot, and I think uh, yeah, it's it's of course it's extremely humbling to be in this position that now people are just like being inspired from you. It's 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 crazy, and then that's how it works, you know. Like Jack Butcher mm. moves on maybe to some different things, you know, and maybe he will get bored from this at some point. Maybe I will get bored at, at, from this at some point, and there are just this this new generation that that comes up and creates stuff or whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I think a lot of a lot of those people come come from my course because like how I actually made a course was mostly that was i was receiving quite a lot of requests from people hey do you teach this i want to learn i want to learn this and so on that was like the first validation okay like i wanted to do a course mm. at some point but i pushed it a bit earlier than i than i wanted because just people were asking asking for me i was like okay there clearly is some sort of demand you know let's 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 sprint on this and let's make it happen um and a lot of people comes comes from the course and i think i don't want to name like any specific people but uh what i appreciate the most is when people without any design background kind of joins this and they understand that they can do this and now they are like getting requests and freelance gigs to work as as a designers or as right. these idea communicators it's it's crazy and it's very very interesting and very humbling i don't know one guy who's, who's actually he's, he's in my course but he was doing things like previously before me but like ash lamb who probably you have seen mm, he's created these I video I was talking about Ash Lamb. yeah and he's actually a designer he's he's really he's really dope uh i was i was recently in barcelona we, we met in person as well so he's awesome uh and it's it's actually fun that you mention about the parents because i was asking about like his parents and and he said that his parents were like creatives his dad i think was a director a, 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 no a music Ooh, producer okay. and his uh, his mother was an actress and he said that they really understand him and support him and said yes go be an entrepreneur do your thing and so it's very interesting when your parents are more into the creative space seems that they more support this type of work as well uh so it was it was interesting when i when i talked with him so yeah he's amazing and there's a bunch of bunch of people who can do this and you know anybody or mo most of the people really can do this type of work like how i look at this I think I try to reframe this this narrative that that it's really not for designers, and I look at this explain ideas visually as a almost like as a new language. You know, you can speak English, you can speak Spanish, you can speak like Indian, and you can explain ideas visually with a bit of with a bit with a bit of English. And it's almost like a like just treat it as a separate language to communicate ideas. And it's very yeah very interesting. And I think I believe most people can do it when they really dive in and just commit to this and then try it out. So yeah. I don't know. Again, went yeah. all over the place with this. <laughs> no, makes sense. It's it's good that you mentioned Ashlam because I forgot his name. Uh, I believe we started interacting a couple of months ago uh, and I used to see this entire dynamic. It was super cool. Uh, all right. So what I want to know is, wow, there was a question I was thinking, which I totally forgot. But huh. What we can go to is I actually saw one of your creative where you mentioned that, okay, how the traditional life works or how the traditional nine to five job works. You have this routine life where you have a meeting, you have this sync, you have other meetings and stuff. But now on the other side, the new creator life is a lot of Stripe notifications, 300 bucks, 300 bucks, mm. 300 bucks. So is that how your life works? You wake up and there are five notifications that people are in and you just earn 1500 bucks. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, that that visual was most mostly to. I'm working on an article just to talk a bit about 
like my story, how I mm-hmm. truly understand leverage on the internet. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that's something that Naval talks really a lot about, but really to like diversify your your income from your time. And then with that illustration, I was just kind of illustrating that, yeah, in, in a regular job, you, you have these meetings or, or it, it wasn't really meant to have a regular job, but it was mostly like you can trade your time for money, meaning you have a consultation call, right. you have this freelance gig, you have this and that, and there are these bookings in your calendar where you basically do this work and you get paid for that. And on the other side, there will be where these notifications where you just get new Stripe notification, money, 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 money comes in. And that's kind of diversified from uh, from your time because you have built this product and that like uh, brings in income. And um it depends, you know, when, when, when I launched the course, it was like that. It was very interesting to wake up to a couple of new sales. It, it's really amazing feeling. Uh, now it's, it's sometimes, yeah, you have some sales during the day, sometimes during the night, but it's not like all, all the time. So, so yeah, I'm trying, kind of, kind of working, trying to improve my funnel. Uh, and I would like to get to that point, of course, where <laughs> more notifications pop up, but it's not that crazy, you know. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I'm curious about this side. So we are right now seeing a lot of conversation around the dark side of music industry because of the NFTs and how NFTs can help about the music industry, stuff like that. Uh, and the main conversation over here is that creators or musicians, they really want to just focus on creating music. They don't want to worry about the business side of it. And that's why they hire these managers. And since the managers are the one who take the lead, who take the lead of the entire business, they take a huge cut out of it. So how do you think about yourself? Was it difficult to uh, be a really good creator and also focus on the business side? Did you take a lot of help on the business side? Because now you are uh, you are not just a creator. You are also thinking about consulting, building a consulting company, building out these courses. So how does the how does both of your faculties work, the creative side, the business side? Yeah, it's... <laughs> I don't have a strict answer because I'm learning. I'm really learning this as I, as I, as I go. Uh, and I'm just, yes, making some mistakes, then understanding, okay, iterating, okay, this did not work. I don't like this, you know, okay, I want to, I want to move away from freelance. So just spend more time on, on, on just building my audience and maybe creating, creating new products and whatnot. And then, yeah, just, just iterating and learning. And I don't have any like solid, solid answers to this, uh, but yeah, I guess, I guess I try to guide everything like through my, okay, what's, what's the goal here? What's kind of my values, you know? Okay. One of the thing is I want to really have this, I don't want to build this huge business maybe that brings like huge amount of money in, but I'm like away from my family and I'm burned out. That's, that's not something I want to build. If I will get to that stage, you know, I will say no, you know, whatever to more money just to have this lifestyle. That's, that's kind of the, one of the North stars, how I can filter and, and, uh, yeah, you you can dive dive into to kind of um, more values. You know, what's what's something else you kind of what's what's important to you? you know, okay, whatever. You know, be kind. You know, don't be an ass. Uh, don't try to scam people or whatever. You know, be ethical. Be this and that. Uh, figure out whatever. What are your values? And I think those are very nice. Kind of your values, your goals are nice guidelines to to not not kind of break and and then you just iterate and try to of course i'm trying to make like more money make bigger impact make this and that but at the same time i don't want to sacrifice my values or or yeah just be unethical or something like that so i don't know that's that's just how i move forward there is not not a huge plan just testing 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 ideas and moving forward yeah definitely what would you advise creators uh in terms of starting out so for me how i started out was i was really into writing i only focused on linkedin grew a bit of falling over there and that's when i expanded initial days i only focused on linkedin so that i can focus on the mechanics focus on at least growing in one area and once i have established something then i expanded to other areas started a newsletter stuff like that so i, I believe that might be a similar phase where you were at where you have grown twitter and now that you have confidence, now you have some established foundation. Now you're growing into different directions and thinking on more projects. What's your advice for new creators, for aspiring creators? Um, yeah, uh, I've heard this advice a lot, you know, that focus on one platform and then 
move on to ad- others. I never really liked that advice, you know. I've kind of ah, sounds <laughs> sounds bullshit, you know. Why you can't be in all 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 places? Uh, but I kind of how I, how I approached it. I never really liked Instagram. I never really liked mm. LinkedIn, but I liked Twitter. That's the reason mm. why I chose Twitter as my main platform, and I really committed to it. Uh, after a couple of like, so, so, and still it's kind of my main platform to which I'm most kind of committed to. Uh, but I repurposed my work on Instagram. It's just, I can, I can just post it on Instagram, whatever, throw some random hashtags in there. You know, if somebody discovers my work, nice, you know, if not, not, you know, who knows where, where, where it can grow. And now actually Instagram is in terms of followers, it's bigger than, uh, Twitter. Oh, um, wow. okay. Yeah. And, and later after the Instagram, I, I did the same on LinkedIn because I don't know previously I can I never really thought as LinkedIn as a social platform I thought it's mostly to store your CV on uh but but turns out that a lot of people have like huge followings there and it's actually a big big community there in LinkedIn so I just repurpose repurpose my work over there as well um and now I have more this distributed like I treat I would say I treat like Twitter and Instagram rather similarly linkedin is still kind of i have not like figured out or researched linkedin how what works best why what's the like vibe there i still kind of repurpose my work and 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 try to engage i don't really engage i guess with that i really am not consuming linkedin at all pretty much uh, mm. just repurposing my work but but i think there is a point where you really it's better when you commit to something and try to figure something out and and then focus on other platforms um uh, instead of just yeah trying to half-ass everything so I, I I believe that's that's a good path to go because it seems that a lot of people are sharing this advice and it seems that it's like it worked for you it worked for me so who knows I believe it's it's a good definitely good approach definitely uh, any other advice that you want to share other than this one focus in terms of platforms or in general for creators in general in general for aspiring creators. Yeah, I think I don't know. Like to be to be honest, like probably if you are listening to this podcast, you know you have some sort of desire already. So I think you're halfway there in 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 terms of making it. I think one important point, which is probably you know, first of course, you know, don't give up. You know, keep iterating, keep trying. You you you'll probably come out on the other side. But I think there is a point which, which, which I found true in my journey when I was like those four years when I was just reading a lot of books and so on. It was all good and well. But I think at some point I was understanding that I'm not, I'm doing a lot of things that feel nice, but they will not make me as like a successful, whatever, profitable creator. And, and there is a time when you really need to look truth in the eyes and just stop justifying your bullshit meaning you you know doing a lot of these nice to have things instead of the 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 things that really matter uh so maybe that's that's one thing but in general just don't give up and i think as as i said before like i think 50% of the battle is figuring out what the hell do you want to do what's your you know what's your vehicle to being a creator what's what's your message what's your niche what's this and what's that i think that is really half of the battle and i think it's really hard to figure out what do you want to do but what it's what it's easy to figure out what you don't want to do. Just try it and understand. Okay, this really didn't feel like me. Whatever, don't like it. Skip that. Move on to next thing that feels the most reasonable or whatever. And yeah, just just keep going and then have faith and go for it. All right, man. This was good. I'm a fan of yours. I have been a fan of yours, and it was good to finally talk and learn how you think. Thank you. Thank you. It's it's I'm. Like, it's really amazing to meet people on the internet, uh, like from conversations like this. And like recently, you know, I've developed quite a lot of, a lot of connections and it was very interesting to go in Barcelona and meet those people in person. It's just, it's so awesome and so interesting. So, so yeah, thank you for inviting me. It was a blast to talk with you. Uh, looking forward to chat in future and yeah, I wish you all the best of luck with your podcast and, and journey and products and whatnot. Thanks, man.